Hey there, friend. Let's create a program in Python within the terminal. I have my terminal open, and you see I'm on my own computer, but I want to access the CSE server. So I'm going to go to this command, ssh your id at csc-linux-01.unl.edu, and press enter. It will then ask you for your password. Whatever you type, you cannot see the characters, and that's for security reasons. But once you've typed up the correct password, press enter. If you've done it correctly, it should access the server. Now, from the server, we have access to Linux commands, and we also have access to a couple of um, things that our own computer might not have, so it's useful to use. First thing, we're going to type clear. Clear will clear the terminal so that we have a little more room to type things. There we go. From there, we can see what's in our folder in our home directory by typing ls and pressing enter. We see I have a couple of folders shown in blue for me, as well as a couple of files. We can also create our own file. So I'm going to create a folder called video by using the make directory command and success. If I type ls now, we see that I have a new folder in my directory titled video. I can also type rm hyphen r and then the name of the folder in order to delete the folder. Now it's gone. I can type or press the up arrow key a couple of times until I reach the command I used previously and run it again. So I'm going to go back to make their video to recreate that folder. There we go. To enter the folder, you type cd in the folder. Let's clear the screen. Now we're within the folder. If we type ls, we see that it's empty. That's fine. Here, let's create our first file. Type vim, press space, and then call it whatever you want. I'm going to call my folder golf.py. .py is the file extension for Python. So if we put .py, then vim is going to know how to color code everything in a way that fits a Python script. So it's useful to have the .py there. Then press Enter we've opened Vim within the terminal. You see a couple of things. First, we have our cursor over there on line number one, but not much else. Vim has two modes. One is command mode, and the other is insert mode. Let's just enter insert mode and see what happens. Press the I key, I for insert. And you see at the bottom left, it says insert. Now I can type whatever I want. Press the Enter key a few times to make a few new lines. I'm going to add a comment, which is done using the pound symbol, and just to keep track of the various Vim commands. I enters insert mode. What other Vim commands do we have? Well, when we're in insert mode, all we can do is type. If we want to enter command mode again, press escape. So when I press escape, you see that the insert in the bottom left corner has disappeared. I can no longer type things. Instead, I have to use Vim commands. For example, go to the line where you've written something and double tap D. That's DD. You see that it's disappeared. Now type U. U will undo. Again, DD, U. Write those down.
Here's another useful command. What if I'm in command line mode and I want to go to the end of the line and enter insert mode? Well, type shift A. Shift A will take you to the end, moving your cursor to the end of the line, and also insert, enter insert mode. So that's a little easier than having to scroll to the very right and pressing the I key. What if we type a command, a Python command, like printing the string test, and I want to make copies of that line? Well, go to command line mode, click the Y key, that's for yank, and you'll notice nothing has happened. But we've basically copied that line. So again, you go highlight the line you want, you hit the Y key for yank, and go to a different line and click P. You can keep clicking P to keep pasting the line you yanked. Every time we type DD, it will delete a line but DD also copies it. So we can delete a line and then click P to paste that line. And just to demonstrate, I'm gonna have it print something else. Maybe, hello. Notice if I click P, it prints the previous thing we copied. Let's delete the hello line and now hit P. Now it prints the new thing, the most recent thing we deleted using DD. Of course, there's a lot of other commands we can use in Vim that affect the appearance of Vim. For example, it's colon, and this allows us to use a couple of interesting Vim commands. If we type set no and u, that will remove the line numbers. You may already have your line numbers removed. But if I type colon set no u, that removes the line numbers. To bring the line numbers back, or to add them to begin with, simply do colon set and u. And that will add line numbers. There's another command. Type color scheme, press the space, and that's colon color scheme space, and then hit the tab key. We can cycle through the various Vim color schemes. For example, let's try industry. Let's try desert. Let's try peach puff. And my default that I like is blue. When you're done editing a file, press escape to enter command mode, type colon w, and that will save the file. Press enter. You'll see that it's saved the file. If you want to save and quit, type colon wq and press enter. That both saves and quits. Now if I type ls, we see I have a folder in my directory called golf.py. I can press up arrow to get to that vim command that allows me to open it. Or I can do the following. Type vim space g and then press tab. Tab will autocomplete things. So it knows the only file in my directory that begins with g is golf.py. So from there, I can press enter and see everything I edited in my file. So what if you're in insert mode and you've typed something up, and, but you don't like your changes and you don't want to save the file? Well, go to command mode, click colon, 
exclamation point, that will force it to quit without saving. So now if I open the file, you'll notice the changes I made are not there because I never saved it. Let's just quit now. Now, my golf.py file doesn't have much to do with uh, golf, so let me make a copy of it and just use it, call it vim commands because that's pretty much what it is. And I'll rename it to a .txt because it's not a Python program. This copies golf.py, saving it into a new folder called vim commands. And now they're both two different files holding the same contents. Let's go to vimgolf.py. From here, I'm going to delete everything up to this point and start writing a Python program. Now, golf is played with par and strokes, and we want to create a program that tells you what score you got in golf, whether it's an eagle, a bird, birdie or whatever else there is. So we want the user to be able to input some things. Let's create two variables, par and strokes. And we want the program to pause once it reaches these lines and have the user input a whole number. We can do that with the following, int input with some parentheses. From there, let's handle the error conditions first. If par is less than 3 or par is greater than 5, that's an error. So let's create a variable called name, which is a string because it's equal to something in quotes, and that string will be error. But what if it's not an error? Well, then it's certainly possible that strokes is par minus 2. Notice in an if statement, we use two equal signs because we're making a comparison. We're not setting strokes equal to par minus two, we're checking for equivalence. And this of course is an equal. So we'll have the name string be equal to the string eagle. Otherwise, certainly strokes could be par minus one. That's a birdie. Otherwise, strokes could be just par itself. That, of course, is par. The only other possibility is that strokes is par plus one, so we'll just say else because there's only one possibility remaining. That is a bogey. Now, if we were to run this, we don't actually see the state of the name variable. We have to print it. So let's print name. Hit escape, type colon, w, q, save and quit. I'm going to clear the screen. To run a Python program, type Python space and then the name of the program. You can use tab to autofill that. If I run it, you'll notice my cursor is now on the next line, but it's paused. That's because it hit that first line where it's asking for input. So it's going to wait there. And once we hit the enter key, whatever we have typed will be saved into the variable called par as an integer. So let's hit five enter. Now it's looking for a whole number that it can save into the strokes variable. Let's use four. It prints birdie and then ends the program. You know it's ended because it's given us the command line again so we can use the regular terminal commands. Hit up arrow and let's run the program again. This time let's do three and four. Bogey. What if we did 6 and 1? Well, that's an error. You can play around with it and see all the different outputs, but that's it for our golf program. Clear the screen again, and let's make another program. Loading.py.
In this program, we're going to import a library called time, and time is going to allow us to pause the program to slow things down. First things first, let's have it print hello user to the user. We want to make a little bit of a loading bar. So to do that, we need to have, we're going to print a bunch of pound symbols and just loop through that, printing more pound symbols each time, thereby simulating a loading bar. To do that, we can begin by creating a variable called i. Have that, or let's call it n. Have that set to zero. And let's loop through something as long as n is less than 10. Within the loop, the while loop, of course, let's put n equals n plus 1. To show you what's going on here, let's just print n and then also use the time sleep command for half a second. We're going to loop through this while loop 10 times. Each time, n will be a little higher. n will begin at 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, all the way until n equals 10, at which point it will not enter the while loop, but break it and go beyond the while loop. After the while loop, let's put finished, so that we know we've broken the while loop. I want to print n before I've added 1 to n, so I'm going to delete line number 9 using dd, create a new line for line 8, and hit p to paste what I just deleted. Let's save and quit. We see it printing the n variable from 0 through 9. Then when n equals 10, it breaks the loop and prints finished. Now there's another way we can do this procedure without having to create n, loop through n, and then increment n with three different lines. We can do all of this in one line. So I'm going to comment these lines out. And just for reference, put them up over there above um, the code I'm going to write, and write the following. For n in range 0, 10, 1. This will do exactly the same thing in Python. A for loop does those three lines all in one line. It creates a variable called n. It begins n at 0, because that's what we've specified as the first number in these, per in these parentheses. It will break once n reaches 10, and it does n equals n plus 1 each time it loops. So those three numbers do the same thing as above. Let's save and quit, just so you can believe me. Let's rerun that program. There, it did the same thing. Now, instead of printing n, let's print a couple of pound symbols. I'm going to print the pound symbol n number of times. So that's going to multiply the character pound by whatever the variable n is. So if n is 5, it'll print 5 pound symbols next to each other. And if it's 9, it'll print 9 pound symbols next to each other. Saving and quitting, we run again, and we see that we have a bit of a loading bar now. It's printing more and more pound symbols each time it loops. Let's also print n. We can't combine a string and an integer in the same print statement by concatenating them. So instead, we need to convert n which is an integer, to a string. Then we can combine the string with the pound symbol using a plus. Saving and quitting, we get the following. It 
It's similar, but now before the pound symbols, we also have the number being printed. Now, one more thing before you go. Every time I open Grim, you'll notice it's blue, it has line numbers, and you see these vertical and horizontal um, cursor markers. If you want the same thing, well, let me show you how to do it. First, go into your home directory, so I can't be in my video folder. Exit the video folder by typing cd dot dot. That will go up a folder. From there, we're in our home directory. So type vim dot vimrc. Anything within your dot vimrc file is a command automatically run when you open vim. So I have color scheme without a colon here. But I have color scheme blue because that's the color scheme I like set by default. If your terminal doesn't support syntax automatically, you might try syntax on. Sometimes that fixes some problems with uh, colors not appearing. Set NU sets the line numbers. Set cursor column and cursor line gives me this coordinate um, marker, which I like very much. For example, if I delete set NU and save and quit, then reopen my .vimrc file using vim, you see that the line numbers aren't set by default. I want the line numbers to be set by default, so saving and quitting again. In reopening vim, we now see the line numbers because our .vimrc has those line numbers. Okay, that's all for now.